Welcome to episode 523 of the Entertainment 2.0 podcast brought to you by the digitalmediazone.com. I'm Josh Pollard. And I'm Richard Gunther, and this is the show that puts you in control of your favorite movies, music, shows, and games. Josh, happy March 108th. <laughs> Is, is that why you were like chuckling at me as I was reading my part of the intro? No, 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 no. But how's it going? Not, not too shabby. The weather is perfect. Absolutely oh, perfect here. Yeah, it has been absolutely beautiful. And I'm convinced it's because most of us aren't out there screwing it up. <laughs> that, that could be. Uh, absolutely <laughs> could be it, it's not likely but it, it could be all right i think we've got a short show for everybody tonight although when i say that it guarantees that we'll be over an hour but yeah not, not a ton of news and maybe more crit- crucially not like 900 items that richard's been doing so right not half an hour of my entertainment center this week <laughs> exactly exactly so First up, we do have a piece of feedback from Zach. He sent this to us at entertainment20 at thedigitalmediazone.com. Well, actually, I think he used the contact form over at the website. Either way, you can get an email off to us in a hurry that way. All right. Well, Zach says, just wanted to say that I have not received both the May and June Xbox One update, but still have the old guide. Navigation starts in the middle. It's strange because my other Xbox One upstairs got the May update and the new guide. Do you think I need to do some kind of factory reset to make the new guide show up? It's obviously restarted a couple times at this point. I even did a full shutdown just to be sure. Maybe others out there are having this issue. Josh, I don't know. What do you what do you think? I have not had an issue like this in years i mean i might not have ever had it but if i have it it's been forever so the the first thing that i needed to know and and i did send a a few messages back and forth with zach to try and clarify a couple of things first off what region are you in because at least with the june update it could just be that they haven't rolled it out to your region but that wouldn't really explain the may update Now, Mm -hmm. the other thing that I asked him is, are you on one of the insider rings? Because, you know, if you're on like the lowest insider ring or whatever, they can go a really long time in between updates. But even then, you would you would have the May update, at least. I mean, you would have had the May update in like April, probably. So, yeah, none of that really makes any sense. And he said, no, he's he's in the U.S., He's not in any of the insider preview rings. So that's not it. Basically, the best I could do is is do a little bit of Googling to see what have people done in the past. And frankly, even my Googling, which granted, I'm probably not the best Googler in the world, but all of the posts that I could find about this are from literally years ago, like 2015, 2016 timeframe. It doesn't seem like people have this issue much anymore. But I did find some articles that were like, you know, change your power settings to be in Power Saver and then shut it off and then reboot it and put it back into, you know, the instant on mode and then hold the power button until it turns off and then leave it off for like 10 minutes and then the power light will start flashing and then you can turn it back on. Like, that's all craziness. So, uh, I sent him the link to that. We'll see if it works for him. The The last thing that I thought of, and and this was because the June update is out now, so I wanted to check it out tonight before recording the show, is because I fired up my Xbox One X that's right on the desk behind me here, and I didn't have the June update yet. You go into settings, go to system, there is a section for update. And you can manually check for updates there. So I actually didn't think of that until, you know, shortly before the show. So I haven't emailed Zach back with that idea yet. I have to imagine he's tried that. But there is a button in there. And, you know, mine said check for update or whatever the button actually said. It's super obvious. It's the first button on the page. 
and it installed the update right away for me. So hopefully that fixes it. I really hope Zach doesn't have to do a factory reset because man, if you got a lot of games, oof, though, that is going to be one long download. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like there was a bug last week with the call of the latest call of duty update that for a lot of users mistakenly mistakenly was downloading an 80 gig update. <laughs> Wait, it just re-download the entire thing for the one bug? Uh, that is not the entire thing. Oh, okay. Like, wow. if, if you wow. just have, like, the free Call of Duty Warzone version, that's 108 gigs. If you have the entire Holy. game, like I do, and have everything installed, because they do allow you to, like, manually install the single-player campaign or manually install the extra multiplayer stuff, my install is 187 gigs. Yikes. This is why I keep running out of space on my external drives. This is why it makes a lot of sense to have an external hard drive. So if you're going to do a factory reset, if you have an external, like if you don't already have one connected to your Xbox, maybe go and get one that you can salvage. You will have to format it to do all of this, but take all of your games that are installed, move them to the external hard drive then do your factory reset, then move them back because you don't want to have to download all of those games all over again. So does it go. impact performance at all to run them off of the external drive? Like, does it matter if you have them locally on the device or on the drive? Generally, no. Uh, in fact, with some drives, it could actually be faster. Like if you have a one terabyte SSD hooked up externally, that could actually oh, be well, faster. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> SSDs are cheap now, man. That that's a total option. That's I mean, true. You can get a one terabyte SSD for under two hundred dollars now. Oh, it's... way less than that, according to all of the new egg stuff that I'm getting in email. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe I should do that. No, I think I'll just wait for the Xbox Series X. So, but if you are going to get one, you should probably go to our site and click on the Newegg ad at the bottom right-hand corner of I like our that homepage because, you know, that helps. It does help. We, we appreciate that a lot. You'll notice we don't have a lot of ads. We have no ads on this show and not really a ton of ads on the website. So, and everything you do like that helps a little. So, yeah, good idea. Thanks. Okay, so that's, that's the tip for Zach. If you have to do the factory reset, definitely move all of your games to another device. You know, actually, he mentions having other Xboxes in the house, and you can do installs from other Xboxes on the same network. So that's an option for you, too. Hmm. But the hard drive might be easier and faster. So there you go. That is our feedback this week from Zach. Thank you. Uh, let us know if you ever figure it out or if you have to do the factory reset to get the latest version. All right, so let's move on to the featured story this week. This is E3 time. There's no E3 this year, but it's that time of year, and it's yep. a new console generation this year. So this is like the one time of year where the featured story is a gaming story, and Richard's just going to have to deal with it. So I can deal with it. I can deal with it. That's fine. This happens. I do have a question for you before you get started, though. Okay. So did they do some sort of virtual event? Yeah. So Sony had their virtual event Thursday afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, I'm assuming that it was awesome. Um, you know, actually, actually, this is where I have to admit, I didn't actually watch it. I, I wasn't uh, able to watch live because I had other stuff going on. You sure. Because it was sure. during work. Yeah. And basically what they did is they showed some stuff about the console because they did finally show the new console and they showed a lot of game trailers. And I don't really need their I don't really need to be there 
well, you don't really need to be there to watch any of it, but especially right. for game trailers, because there could be a whole bunch of games that you're just not interested in. So why sit there through a two or three minute trailer right. when every gaming site in the universe has a blog post up after these events that's like, here's every single trailer from the event. And what I was hearing other people say is that the the live broadcast was like kind of heavily compressed. So it didn't even really look that great. Whereas all of the standalone videos for the trailers that you could find later, you know, you could watch in 4K and make them look really good. Right. Yeah, of course. That makes a lot of sense, actually. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of people were like, you know, I watched this video uh, and didn't make it feel like the next generation of gaming because the the graphics aren't that much better when you compress the crap out of the video. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, now the thing that I noticed is that we, we saw the device itself. Is this the first time that they've revealed the device? Yes. They've, they previously showed us the controller, but this is the first time they showed us the actual console. Okay. So, I think when we talked about the controller, we had some comments about it and it was kind of weird looking and very futuristic, almost mm -hmm. a little bit like, I, I don't know, like a stormtrooper or something. And then I have to say, like, they just went all in on <laughs> that design ethos for the unit itself because the console looks pretty much like a stormtrooper but more evil yeah so is that a good thing or a bad thing to you uh it's a weird thing yeah it is definitely the most out there video game console design i've seen in a long time maybe ever and there have been <laughs> some weird consoles out there but this one might be the weirdest yeah, yeah. i don't love it i really i don't like it it's enormous uh, in terms of modern consoles, like going back to PlayStation 2 and newer. It is the physically largest console ever released. It's bigger than the Xbox, the launch Xbox One that looked like a giant VCR. It's uh, taller than the Xbox Series X that we're expecting to see. Not quite as wide. So I think kind of looks like a mini fridge. I mean, neither of these boxes look fantastic, but at least the Xbox Series X, like, it's not offensive. It just, it's just kind of this weird monolith looking thing that'll go under your TV. But this thing, like, there's, there's not going to be any hiding this or, or hoping that people aren't going to notice that weird video game console underneath your TV. Oh, yeah. No, no chance of that whatsoever. And the other thing that I don't understand is, how do you lie this flat? Can you lie this flat? I believe you can. Okay. And the reason that I ask that is this is hard to describe on an audio show, but the, the design, particularly at the top, kind of evokes, like, if, if think of the classic Cadillac fins that you have <laughs> on the back of an, an old, Cadillac, where they kind of stuck up beyond the roof or beyond the uh, uh, line of the trunk. Mm -hmm. it, it has that going on where it almost looks like they would stick out and it wouldn't lie flat without being wobbly. Yeah. It's anyway, it's weird. I, yeah, I'm not, it's weird. I'm not a huge fan of this idea of vertically mounted game consoles or frankly, any sort of expensive electronics because I have cats and they'll freaking knock that crap over. Oh yeah. That's, I hadn't even thought of that. I look at it and I think, where do you put that in an entertainment center? And here we have yet again, yet another manufacturer that is so arrogant to believe, <laughs> imagine that Sony, that their console is the only thing that you're going to have next to your TV. Yeah. Yeah. Especially nowadays when, you know, the previous, really the previous two generations, so like Xbox 360 and Xbox One, PS3, PS4, those machines were absolutely meant to be 
to to work as your one and only device because right. they did gaming plus they did all the streaming and music and all that stuff and they had disk drives for Blu-rays and 4K Blu-rays and stuff sure, like that. Sure, sure, but they're but all kind of backing off anymore. of the entertainment story. Right, right, because there's really no reason for it. Like, you're not going to buy one of these just to watch Netflix anymore. Right, not when you can get a Roku for 40 bucks. Exactly. So I, I think it's it makes sense for both Sony and Microsoft to be backing off of the, this is your amazing media device. Like, let's just make it an amazing gaming device. That makes sense. and. I'm sure there's some of you out there going, well, that's not what you said about the Xbox One. You wanted it to be your one and everything. I did. That was seven years ago. <laughs> Things are a little different now. We had HTPCs back then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think I'm allowed to change my mind as technology changes over seven years. Probably. Okay, so I think this thing looks stupid. I don't really love the idea of it under under my TV. but. At the end of the day, what it looks like isn't going to matter at all. It, you're not going to choose whether or not you're getting a PlayStation based on what this thing looks like. So I, I, I kind of just don't really care. And people already know I'm a nerd. So if I end up with another freaky, weird looking box underneath my TV, eh, it's not going to surprise anybody. <laughs> so the thing that's more interesting here is that it, the the kind of big surprise was they're offering two models they have you know the regular version that you would expect that has all of the powerful internals plus uh they're finally this time around doing a 4k uhd blu-ray drive first time in a playstation but they're also offering a model without a drive uh, without a, a disc drive at all so they're calling it the digital edition you know banking on the fact that lots of people just buy digital games anyway yep i th i think there is only one reason they've done this and it is not it's not for user choice it's not because the future is going all digital this is oh no 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 this, no, this is, is all about saying starting at exactly this is a hundred percent about having a cheaper version at launch because i think as we've talked about previously they are really really scared that microsoft is going to undercut them on price and yep. and have a more powerful device and they're hoping that if they can sell this for 50 dollars less then that gets it at 50 dollars cheaper but mm -hmm. dude i just buy the version with the disc drive like i still don't buy many games on disc but if it's only going to be a 50 dollar difference on a Four hundred fifty to five hundred dollar device. Why, why limit yourself? Because, dude, like you can get used games or just cheap, you know, games on sale physically cheaper, far more frequently than you can digitally. Plus, the you know, I'm gonna let a friend borrow this game. That whole sort of thing. You know, mm -hmm. the thing that they really made a huge deal about at the PlayStation Four press event. Back at E3 in 2013, where they were like, Xbox is so confusing with their game sharing. You want to see how to share a game on PlayStation 4? And they handed a disc to another person standing on stage. Well, you can't do that with a digital edition. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think this is 100% just, just to have a cheaper SKU. To hopefully, and hopefully for them, beat out Microsoft on the price of the Xbox Series X. Now, on the Microsoft side, we still don't know if they're actually going to have that second, you know, less powerful SKU, the codename Lockhart. We'll see. I'm I'm still thinking it doesn't happen at launch. And and all of the rumors are that it's it's a very different strategy. It's not just a lack of a drive. It's a less powerful device. So, then right. it's not even apples to apples anymore. So, who knows? Right. That's more of like an Apple TV type of device. It plays games and it does media and it's all digital. Right. Right. And I, I think they'll also be heavily focusing that on the, on using that with Project X Cloud. So mm -hmm. you don't have the most powerful box under your TV, but you can stream 
from a super powerful box and have it still look great. So yep. we'll see if that actually happens and if that even happens this year. So that was the main thing about this. Obviously, like I said, there's a whole bunch of games that they showed off, but I don't, I don't tend to like to rattle through a whole bunch of, of games on this show. I do want to talk a little bit about what we can expect to be playing at launch. That's, that's kind of the important thing. What, what are going to be the, the launch games, especially the console exclusive launch games. And Sony has one really big one and it's Spider-Man. The previous Marvel Spider-Man game that came out last year on PS4 is one of the best selling games ever. And I think it's the best selling console exclusive ever. It was a fantastic Mm. game. So to launch with kind of a sequel um, is going to be a really big deal. And this time around they're doing it's Spider-Man Miles Morales. So it's the Spider-Man from uh, Into the Spider-Verse or whatever that animated version of Spider-Man was that came out a couple years ago. Yeah. 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 So that that'll be cool. And that's that's a pretty big win. That's a huge announcement. Um, They're also going to have Godfall, which is it's being produced by another company, but it it is a console exclusive to Sony. Uh, So that's supposed to be uh, a a day and date, you know, launch title for the PlayStation. Also, they showed trailers or talked about some other really big games, a follow up to Horizon Zero Dawn called Horizon Forbidden West. They showed a new Ratchet and Clank game. They showed another Gran Turismo game. All of these are really, really big deals. All of them have no release date. (laughs) So they're being Sony. Like Sony just has this history of, we're going to show you these amazing games and they might be out in three years. Like you just never know with Sony. So I mean, you got to talk about some of these things. We've been expecting a Horizon sequel for a while. Uh, You always expect a new version of Gran Turismo. It's their equivalent to Forza. But, I mean, if they're not announcing a release date, it's probably not going to be a launch game. So that's frustrating. And then... I want to hit a little bit more on third party because if you're if you're you're starting to get geared up, maybe you're starting to save some money for these next gen consoles. One thing you might be wondering about at this point is what am I going to play on this thing? Well, there are going to be some other third party games that will be available on both platforms. So all of these games that I'm about to say will be available on PlayStation 5 and on Xbox Series X. We'll start with the big ones. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, going to be a huge deal. Dirt 5, already shown at the Xbox event. Madden, of course. NBA 2K, of course. Probably FIFA, probably NHL. They haven't been announced, but I'm sure they'll be there. The next Call of Duty game. There's always a Call of Duty game basically every year. I'm sure it hasn't been announced, but I'm sure it'll be there. A lot of the big name third party games that you're playing now, the the big like games as service games are also starting to announce that they'll be available right away. So Fortnite, of course, Call of Duty Warzone will be there. Rainbow Six Siege will be there. So you are going to have a lot of really good games to play if you do decide to jump in on the next gen on the day that all of this stuff comes out. All right, to, to get us out of this, you might be wondering, okay, Josh, you've you've put in your, your quota of, of PlayStation stuff, so when, when are we going to hear about the thing you care about, the Xbox? I don't know. Uh, Microsoft is supposed to do another big event in July, showing off a lot of their first-party games. And maybe that's when they'll announce price. If they're going to announce the Lockhart, that's probably when they would do it. So, but we don't even have a date for that event. All we know is July. So it's probably a month out still. Yep. Still waiting. And I think all of this is disrupted by not having E3, that everybody's schedules are kind of based around the events that are 
that everybody knows about. And then if they have to work around that, because, okay, well, Sony isn't going to do it then. So when are they doing it? And what are we going to do? And so, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, Microsoft would have had their huge E3 event. Sony would have still had a big event during E3. They just weren't there. So, yeah. All right. Video news. Two quickish ones. Richard, have you ever heard of the app Real Good, R-E-E-L, Good? I I think the way that we know about it is that someone wrote in and let us know about this thing, if I remember correctly. And I thought of it as kind of like a, a software version of what Apple TV and TiVo stream and a variety, you could argue even Roku is doing this to some extent, uh, what these different services are trying to do in terms of curating content from all of these different streaming services that we're all struggling with and wading through for discovery nowadays. Yeah, that is what it is. So I, I think you, you, you clarified it really well. It it gives you a, a way of easily finding shows regardless of what services they're on. And it gives you the ability to just filter down to the services you actually have. Well, so this has been a mobile app for a while. The cool thing is now it's available on Android TV and Amazon Fire. And if you use the built-in LG stuff on an LG TV, it's there too. I don't know cool. if there are restrictions on on those. Like, I, I don't know if it's available on your LG TV, Richard, but hopefully. Yeah, I mean, typically when they release apps, unless you're only developing to a certain SDK, you get them on older versions. I'm pretty sure that we got HBO Max, but I didn't check it. Um, I think the only thing I'm curious about is I didn't realize it was possible even to develop an app that jumped from itself to some other app. So I, that's cool. Yeah. I, I, especially on the LG stuff. I, I have no idea. Right. Yeah. Right. Cause that, that is one of the absolute best things about this. It's, it's not like go and find some show. It tells you where it is. Then you have to go and open that app and try and find it within the app for a lot of the major services. It will jump straight to that episode or that movie whatever it is yeah nice but not everything so i i did try this out on my android tv today on the nvidia shield i didn't try it on the on the tivo stream but i'm I'm sure it's there because it's just an android tv device and it's cool like i mean it jumped right into a, a movie on amazon prime that was pretty awesome it, it shows you a little icon over top of everything to tell you what service it's on which is nice but when you're setting this app up it asks you which of this you know long list of services do you have and it does tell you for a bunch of them we don't have the ability to jump straight into videos in this app and it's on more services than i wish that were the case for but for all of the big ones you know the, the netflix and hulu and Disney Plus, those services, it'll jump straight into the episode. And, and that, that's kind of key, I think. Yeah. And cool. it, it does have a huge list of services. It's got Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, um, HBO Max, Showtime, Crunchyroll. They say they have 160 sources. They also include... Whoa! Yeah, I know. It, it's an that's- insane... That is insane. Like CNET just did this thing on ranking the hundred top 100 streaming services available <laughs> in the U S and I'm like, wait, there's a hundred streaming services available in the U S apparently there's more. Yeah. It's kind of crazy how many there are. And that list is only getting bigger, right? So it also has a bunch of the, the, the pay TV channel apps that you could get like if you have cable or whatever so think of like your tlc app and the sci-fi app and mtv 
All of those channels have their own apps too. And this will work with those, although for it seemed like the vast majority of those, the app did not have the ability to launch straight into the episode. And that's not surprising. Right, right. So the other thing that I think is worth pointing out here is you don't have to go into this app and then sign into Amazon and sign into Netflix and Hulu and all that stuff because it's just launching those apps. So that's awesome. Like it, it's not signing into a bazillion apps. It's just selecting those services. So Oh, meaning that you don't have to like authenticate with those other apps. Right. Got it. You still have to go through those other apps own onboarding and authentication process if you're using them, right. but you don't have to do anything to connect to them. Correct. Correct. Got yeah. it. Got it. That makes sense. One thing that I was wondering about with this, does this do anything like what TiVo and Apple TV are trying to do where it actually keeps track of what you've watched and where you are in different shows that you watch? I don't think it keeps track of like where you are within a video. So like if you're 26 minutes in, it probably doesn't do that. It would leave that up to say the Hulu app. Right. But how about a series? You know, it has a, a thing that, that shows, you know, you can specifically mark episodes as watched. I don't oh. know if it'll do that for you. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, that's something, you know? Mm hmm Yeah. And, and it does have the, the concept of, like, going in and making a my list of shows that you're watching. So you could go in there and put Homeland, and, you know, maybe you've watched the first three seasons, so maybe you probably have to manually say all of those seasons have been watched, but I don't know what happens if you open up Season three, episode six, does it automatically mark it as watched? I'm not sure. Hmm. I might have to play around with this. I mean, this is an interesting alternative to people or for people who don't have or don't want to use Apple TV or something like that. Yeah, definitely. All right. So that's called Real Good, R E E L G O O D. That's one word. Again, it's available on your mobile devices and now on Android TV, Amazon Fire and LG TVs. Cool. Hey, Josh. Yeah. So you've been watching a lot of Quibi lately? <laughs> um, that's, that's a fair question because I was the one that when we talked about this, this new service a couple of, uh, what was that, a couple of months ago at this point? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I don't know. It's actually kind of cool, Richard. There's some shows that I'm kind of liking. I bet I will watch this. Yeah, no, I haven't watched any since, probably since we recorded that episode. Okay, well, is the reason that you're not watching it because you don't spend as much time on your phone these days, and so you might be more interested if you could just watch it on your TV? Uh, I think that would be the case for a lot of people, but probably still not for me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I think I had mentioned that I wasn't interested at all in this service, but as you've probably heard by now or found out if you are a Quibi user, they have added the ability to Chromecast from their app to your big screen. Let's be really clear about this. This was not on their immediate roadmap. No. They intended this service to basically take advantage of the fact that people have their noses in their phones all the time. Yeah. But not as much anymore. Is that really true, though? I, mean, I think. Do you find yourself using your phone less? Oh, yeah. Way, way less. Hmm. I find myself. Well, first of all, I was never one to use my phone for video consumption once we had services that allowed us to stream content on our bigger devices like mm -hmm. TVs and computers. Right. So that wasn't for me. But what the numbers are showing is that phone use and app use is way down 
And you know what's up? Is TV app use and desktop application and web use. Mm -hmm. So companies are having to adjust to that. And Quibi, to their credit, quickly adjusted their priorities and pushed out an update to be able to stream the content or cast the content to your large screen if you want to do that. So I have to give them some credit for this because I think that this is this is a smart move on their part. I you know I I was not a fan of this from the beginning. I am not bullish on this. I don't think Quibi is going to survive in the long run, but I applaud their ability to like rethink how they're going to deliver this content to people to be relevant today. Yeah. 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 They had to act quickly. And since they have what seems like more money than God, it yeah, seems I think like... it was something like $1.6 billion in investments or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Something like that. They ought to be able to whip out Chromecast support pretty quickly with $1.6 <laughs> billion. Dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a Roku app soon. Maybe. Someday? Know. Yeah, I don't know about that. Probably not. But they could with that kind of money. And they might need to. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. We'll have to see where this goes. Yeah. All right. Well, we have one more story for you tonight, and it's back to gaming. But it's this is by no means a featured story. But we mentioned a couple of times earlier that there's a new update for the Xbox One, the Xbox One June 2020 update. And it's not a big deal, but it's worth at least mentioning what you can expect from this new update that is rolling out basically right now. So there's really three things. The first one is the only one that really matters, and that's that they've done a little bit more work to make it easier to figure out where it is that you got your games from. So the interesting thing about the article over at Xbox Wire is it says, we know that you get your games from all sorts of places. You buy them on disc, you buy them digitally, you get them from Xbox Game Pass, or maybe you got them for free as a, an Xbox Live Games with Gold. We want you to be able to know where they came from. Cool, so now they've got a little overlay thing that displays on the home screen in the manager games and apps screen. It'll say things like Game Pass and Xbox Live Gold. Doesn't say if you have it on disc. It doesn't say anything if you bought it digitally. It will say it, uh, I, presumably, if you got it from EA Access because they do mention that. So I would assume that EA Access has its own little overlay. But if you bought that game digitally or physically, it just doesn't have a badge at all. And because it doesn't display anything if you bought it physically, and maybe you forgot that you did, then I don't, you're, you're still going to go to launch the game and it's going to go, hey, you got to stick the disc in for this guy. And you don't know that ahead of time. Now, maybe that's not a frequent problem for people, but I don't, it seems... Seems kind of weird that they mentioned disc purchased, you know, disc based games and that it doesn't actually do anything special for that. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So not a huge deal, but kind of cool. Uh, the other two are not even nearly that cool. The first one is uh, both of these are around badging. If you have Xbox Live Gold or if you have Xbox Game Pass, now on the home screen, top left, up where it says, your username, your gamer tag, it'll put a badge next to it. So like I have Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, so it has Ultimate next to my name. Okay, cool, whatever. And then the other badging that they did is they say that the the club's concept on the platform has taken off really well. And there's, you know, anybody can make their own club, private or public. The DMZ actually has a club. We barely, we barely use it. But there are also official clubs per game. You know, like NHL 20, it has a club. I actually checked it out the other day for like the first time ever just to see, you know, what's in this thing. 
And they wanted to make it super clear. How do you know if you're in the official club or just some club that other people have, have made? Well, like Twitter, they've got verified badges now. So if it's the official one, it has a big verified checkbox next to it. That's really smart. Yeah, it is. It's not life changing, but it's smart. Yeah, no, it's good. I like it. Yeah. So that is it for our gaming news. And that is it for all of our news. If you've enjoyed any of this, or if you're really just waiting for uh, this next segment of what's going on in our entertainment centers, I'm going to bet you've got some friends that would also be interested in some of that stuff. So do us a favor, share this podcast with your friends in whatever way that means for you, whether that's in Slack, you know, your, your Slack groups at work or on social media. Spread the love. We'd appreciate it. And serious shout out and thanks to Tony in the chat who pretty regularly tweets when he's listening to our show. He does. He's pretty awesome about it. We really, really uh, appreciate that. All right. So in my entertainment center, let's um, let's get back to the TiVo stream again and probably most specifically the Sling TV service that we're using to get live TV through that. I have to admit that more and more this past week or so, we've been cheating and just turning the normal TiVo on. And there's a reason for that. In my household, and by that I mean from either Edward or from me, you're hearing things like, I can't stand that this thing doesn't let you pause or how come I can record this, but I can't record that. Or why does it keep crashing? Oh no. <laughs> and so the tolerance of sling TV on the TiVo stream device is getting lower and lower and lower as time goes by. I think an exact quote from Last night was, then why are we still using this thing? Yikes. Yeah. So uh, as I'm getting at the end of my initial month of service and my free Showtime and Stars and Epics trial with Sling is over, I have canceled that. And considering that we're using it less, but I will still continue to test it. I also dropped my sling service down to just blue. So getting rid of any channels that I would have had also through orange, which by the way, you can't determine just in terms of any sort of like, you know, side by side comparison on the sling TV site. No, 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 because they obfuscate all of this stuff through bundles of channels that you can only view by logo in pop-ups. So there is no way to do any sort of evaluation of, okay, well, does this have the channels? Does that have the chat? No, nope. They are very strategically not doing that. Yeah. So instead I decided, all right, screw it. I'm getting rid of orange. I'm just getting blue. I added DVR service. I got rid of any of the other extras that I had, and I now have cut my bill from $70 to $35, which is a pretty significant change. And honestly, I don't feel like I'm going to miss much. I think the thing that many people might miss under normal circumstances would be the sports channels, but they don't even matter right now. Right, right. Because without Orange, you don't get ESPN. You also don't get the Disney stuff. That's correct. And I don't care about not getting the Disney stuff because I have Disney Plus. Right. So not a problem. Hey, so, you know, that's what's going on with Sling and TiVo. Speaking of Disney, I watched the most recent episode of Disney Insider. It is by far my favorite. It was fantastic. If you haven't checked out this show yet, it is basically three 
five minute behind the scenes things glued together. This last one was fantastic. Speaking of fantastic and speaking of things owned by Disney, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this past week. Man, this last week's episode was good. Probably the best episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I've seen in a year. It was so good. I finished watching Shameless on my free Showtime trial. So I got that done just in time. Continuing to watch Hard Strings. I restarted, and Josh, you may be interested in this because I had finished Treadstone with only to find that there was going to be no season two. And I said, okay, well then let's get back to Jack Ryan because I also kind of lost track of that because I wasn't paying attention. And so I went back and restarted Jack Ryan, watched the first two episodes of that. And I'm really enjoying that. That's a, that's a great show. And I'm looking forward to finishing out season two, which I never did before. Also went back and restarted an old, old, yeah, old, old, four-year-old, five-year-old BBC series called Class. This is set in the world of Doctor Who at an educational institution that is kind of renowned in that universe. It's only a one season thing, eight episodes. So I'm like a third of the way through right now. I know that doesn't go into eight episodes evenly, but whatever. Also started. No, I don't. I think I mentioned this before. I think I mentioned that I was starting to watch what we do in the shadows. This is like a mockumentary of the life of a house of vampires. It's very entertaining. Really enjoying that. Also watched a couple more episodes of our, our cartoon president before my Showtime trial ended. And that'll probably be it until I decide that I need Showtime again. And that's pretty much it for what I have been watching. But a couple more notes. And I'm curious to know what your experience has been on a number of these, actually, Josh. So first off, Plex. My Plex server, which I run on a Windows 10 machine and ultimately switched from the beta updates to just the production updates because I was having so many problems, still crashing all the time, at least weekly, if not more often than that. Do do you have these problems or is this just some weird thing on my computer? Uh, well, so I'm running Plex on my Android TV on my NVIDIA Shield. And I don't think I'm having these problems, but man, Plex lately has been getting very little use in my house. The kids are like all YouTube all the time, or maybe some Food Network stuff on, I actually have been watching that on Hulu. I don't even know. Uh, okay. So, it's funny that you say that though, because I didn't even know that Plex had crashed the last two times it crashed. Because again, I've been doing most stuff through streaming. Interesting. That should tell me something. And it was friends who told me, "Hey, your Plex server's down." <laughs> Actually, shame to be about it, but you know, whatever. So. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. So, you know, John in the chat suggests maybe I should do a fresh install, and that might not be a bad idea. One of the things I was considering was installing Plex on my disk station Mm. and seeing if it would be able to handle it. Remember, it has onboard encoding. I don't know if that will work with Plex or not. So that's something I might try. We'll see. Sure, it has onboard encoding, but you have 4K rips on there. How is it going to handle that? It says it can do two 4K rips or two 4K streams. But again, I don't know if Flex can take advantage of the onboard encoding. So Hmm. we'll see. Decoding, whatever you got. Yeah. Uh, uh, Anyway, so the other thing is that I have been listening to podcasts, 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 trying desperately to catch up. I got as far as three weeks behind at oh one point gosh. during all of this because it's just hard to have time where I'm not trying to either focus on work 
or we're doing other things that we would normally wouldn't do when we're not at home all the time. And so it's been hard. I, I did, however, manage to get that down to just 10 days behind on podcasts. So I am up to, as of now, I, I guess it would be March 98th. <laughs> and I just have 10 more days to catch up. So we'll see how I do on that. And then finally, you know, Pocket Cast is still making me a little bit crazy. Everything that I try to do in there, everything that I look at seems to be completely backwards from <laughs> the way that stuff would normally work. Like I can't figure out how to automatically get stuff to show up in my playlist. I have to manually, repeatedly force whatever's in a certain filter to fill up the playlist. And that's okay now when I have a backlog of 76 episodes, it's not going to work when I'm waiting for the next episode. So I'm curious, just like, does it get better? Like, I don't, I, I don't understand why it's so complicated. Well, you can go in on a per show, like, and by show, I mean, entertainment 2.0, not episode on a per show basis and say, when a new episode comes out, Put it in my play next list. That's awesome. How do I do that with every single show that I subscribe to? Because that's what I want. Or everything that's in a filter, that's what I want. I want that to end up in my, I, I just don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't think there's a way to do it for a filter because a filter <sighs> is just a filtered view of what you have. Yeah. Like the relevant stuff, like new episodes. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a global setting of just make add everything to my now plane or whatever the heck it's called, but you can definitely do it per show. Okay. Well, I'll look into that. That means that if that's the only solution, then anytime I subscribe to something new, then I need to remember to select that option for it as well. Come on. It's got to be easier than this. I just, I don't understand why it's not easier. I don't but, think that's that hard. That's customizable. Like some people are going to want that and some people don't. I have a default for the app. Just. Yeah. It you know, feels like that's got to be there. I haven't found it if it is. All right. So that is what's going on with me. Josh, your list is longer than usual. It oddly is. Um, yeah, I, I was adding to it and I'm like, well, this isn't going to be long. And then I'm like, oh, but that, oh, oh, but that too. Uh, yeah, and that one also. So uh, a little bit longer than usual. So actually a, a couple of audiobooks first. I did finish that Dark Tower book, uh, book four in that series, Wizard and Glass. Um, it, glad to be done it? Yes, glad to be done. <laughs> um, I want to say the last... Three hours were back in the present day or whatever, not not the flashback sort of thing. Yeah, uh, like it wasn't bad. It just I just wish it wouldn't have been the entire book, and I don't. I still don't see yet why it had to be the whole book. Whatever. Uh, so the next book is like eleven weeks out to get it from the library. So. Jen was like, you know, it sounds like you've got some time that you're going to be waiting for. So why don't you read one of my favorite book series? And Jen is really into fantasy stuff. And I'm not generally into fantasy, but she was like, I think you'll like this one. It's about an assassin. There's all sorts of action and killing and violence. I think you'll love it. <laughs> and I'm not really sure what that says about what she thinks of me and my media consumption choices but she's probably right so uh she said i think this might be her second i don't know maybe it's her second favorite series but it the first book in the series is called throne of glass and it's it's kind of got a little bit of uh hunger games feel to it because it's this assassin chick gets brought in to be part of a competition of um like people for the king it's like the winner of this competition gets to be like 
the king's assassin or i think they call him the champion whatever i don't know um Meaning the assassin for the king, not the assassin of the king. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Right. Just to clarify. Yeah. 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 And then there's, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on too. So it's, it's actually been really good. I mean, I, I don't say that like I'm surprised, but because she likes this book for a reason, I'm just not typically into fantasy stuff, but this has been I, like, I've really enjoyed it. So cool. I'm close to done with the first book there. Um, it was also... She she owns all of these books, so I don't have to wait to get them from the library. Um, and this one she bought through Audible. So this is actually, this might surprise you, Richard. This is the first time I've ever used the Audible app. No, oh, all right. It's fine. Well, it, it's not horrible. Yeah, it's fine. I, no, yeah. Yeah. That's about all I have to say about uh, it, too. It's not like I need a lot of features from an audiobook app. Uh, I, I want it to work every time I open it, and I want to make sure that it doesn't lose my place. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, and my big beef with it over time has been that it needs to remember my place over the long haul. Mm. Like, I might put a book down and try to pick it up literally years later, <laughs> and if I still have an account and I still have that book, it should still remember. And with Audible, there have been times that it did not. Dude, years later, you probably need to restart the book. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I usually go back a chapter and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this. All right. Well, your memory is better than mine then. All right. So that's it for books. I don't have any TV shows or any sports, obviously. Uh, or any movies even that I've watched over the last week. I have played some games. Richard is looking at this list thinking, gosh, it sounds like you spent the entirety of the last week playing video games. Totally. The list is long. I actually haven't spent that much time playing. Uh, the game I've played the most of over the last week, Call of Duty. Love that game. It's really good. Finally feel like I'm getting good at Call of Duty. I mean, it only took me 12 years to get good at Call of Duty. Uh, played a little bit of Project Cars 2 because now, now that things are starting to reopen, I'm driving my car more and I'm like, man, I want to drive a race car. So I come home and then fire up Project Cars 2 because driving a Toyota Matrix is not like driving a race car. I can tell you that. I can tell you that for sure. So uh, a little bit of NHL 20, uh, which is actually the first time I've played in like a month. And then... I don't think I mentioned this last week on the show, but Nintendo did their big sale, um, their big summer sale. Maybe it's still going on. I'm not really sure. And for a big sale for Nintendo means that the $60 games that are five years old are $42. That's crap. It's total garbage. The games don't <laughs> go on, you know, bigger discount on the Nintendo platforms, but that's just how it is. Like. Seriously, if you're thinking of getting into gaming, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, don't get a Nintendo system because the consoles never go on sale and the games hardly go on sale. And when they do, it's not by much. Seriously. Hey Josh, but yeah. Did you take economics in school? <laughs> <laughs> it's supply and demand. Uh, sort of. The, the, but that doesn't really apply to digital games, Richard. No, but it totally does because they still have, I mean, I don't know how they've done it, but Nintendo still has the franchises that everybody wants. Yeah. So yeah, Richard, I get it. Like, yes, these games are only available on Nintendo, so you're going to pay a premium, but that's still kind of crap. So yeah. anyway, th there are a couple of games that I've been waiting on and hope they would go on massive sale but they didn't they went down to 42 dollars. so i picked up mario tennis aces because i love the mario sports e games it's been a lot of fun and i picked up new super mario brothers u deluxe this is one that like especially frustrates me because this is one of the many games that was actually a wii u game so this is like a seven or eight year old game from the previous generation of consoles 
that all they did was like add all of the DLC and put it on the Switch. And it's still $60 regularly. <laughs> because they can. Because they can. Yeah. So I picked up both of those. Uh, the, the new Super Mario Brothers, like this is this is required, basically. It, it's classic side-scrolling Mario. You can have up to four people playing on screen at the same time. So I've been playing it with my seven-year-old. She loves it. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. So that's that's it for what I've been doing. A lot of gaming. Uh, a lot of reading, not much else. No TV viewing, none. No TV. None. Wow. No, uh, it's been it's been a busy couple of weeks, really. So, um, I mean, like this sounds like a lot of gaming, but it, I really didn't play that much. Like, all of this was basically over the weekend. It was mostly Nintendo angst. <laughs> maybe, maybe. All right, well, we'll see if I can rectify some of that for next week. You know, you brought up Jack Ryan. I did love that show. I would like to go back and check out more of that. Maybe I'll watch some Quibi shows. Probably not. (laughs) No. (laughs) Probably not. All right, well, if you want to get a hold of us, there's a bunch of ways you can do that. We're on Twitter. Richard's handle is at Richard Gunther. I'm at Josh Pollard, and the website is at DigiMediaZone. We're on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. And all of that stuff is over in the show notes at the digitalmediazone.com, where you can also find Richard's other podcasts. So if you're not 10 days behind on podcast and you want a smart home podcast to listen to, you can check out Richard's show. So Richard, what's going on with Home On? Indeed, new show on deck features Justin Miller, the co-founder and CEO of connected yard and i think i mentioned him in our last episode they're the makers of a smart pool monitor called fin it was a great conversation and i'm really looking forward to getting the episode out nice all right we also do this show live usually tuesday nights at 8 30 p.m eastern we tweet about it beforehand so that you'll know for sure it's always fun to have you in the live chat, you get to see the craziness that sometimes happens while we're recording the show. Uh, the, the folks in the chat tonight got got to witness a couple of different events So that, that I don't even typically include in the YouTube video. So if the video worked out this time, it will be over on YouTube also. I've been trying to do that more. So you can go check those out on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, all that sort of stuff that you're supposed to do over at YouTube. I can ask my kids. They're the ones who watch all the YouTube. They they know what to say. Maybe maybe I'll get them to record an outro clip for, for promoting our YouTube channel. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not having anyone's <laughs> children doing a recording on our show. No, that is not happening. Okay. Here we are. No fun. No fun at all. <laughs> All right, well, that is going to do it for episode 523. He's Richard Gunther, and I'm Josh Pollard. Thanks for listening to Entertainment 2.0. Adios. Goodbye.